are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So there's some fucking music playing in the background. Monks are rapping. They're doing some fucking crazy shit out there. There's someone singing at the moment. Tibetan fucking monks were rapping about momos. Well, I don't know if they were Tibetan monks because I can't fucking see them, but they were fucking rapping about something. Here, have a listen to this. This is right outside my door. That's not That's not the rapping monks though. That's just some fucking Tibetan shit. I don't know what the fuck that is. That's been cranking all day by the way since 7:30 this morning. They've been fucking partying hard these fucking monks. So I heard there's a new variant out there, fucking Omni Cunt or something. They gave you like a month off and then boom. Omni fucking cunt virus comes along. And now everyone's in fear and panic again. This is the new normal. It's going to be like this forever. They're just going to continuously try and keep you off balance. That's the easiest way to fucking make you pliable. It's the same with crowds in stand-up. If you can keep the crowd a little bit off balance, when you hit them with a punchline, it fucking hits harder. You just need to keep the crowd a little bit off balance so they don't know what to expect next. And they're like fucking putty in your hands. I haven't felt that in a little while. So you better get used to the idea of impermanence because this is just what it's going to be now. Every single time you feel like you're on firm footing again, they're going to fucking throw something at you. Keep you off balance. But the way to counteract that is to deeply, deeply think about the idea of impermanence. It's a Buddhist idea. I think it's one of the fucking noble truths or some shit. But if you can truly understand the idea of impermanence, you'll be able to live in the flux of this bullshit. It won't affect you. Nothing's permanent. You'll be able to surf these fucking waves. It's all fucking horse shit. Even if it's real, it's horse shit. So what's it got? Like 30 mutations, this fucking thing. And it's resistant to fucking vaccines. What? You mean just like Delta and the other fucking cunt was? Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Learn to surf the waves of impermanence. That's the fucking key. As you can probably tell, I bought like 14 Buddhism books today and I read like two pages of one of them. And now I'm fucking spiritual again. I'm back on the Buddhism train. I just need a little bit more practice because there was a monk at the ATM today in front of me and fuck, he was taking a long time. I was getting pretty fucking pissed. I was like, what is this fucking monk up to? What does he even need money for? What's he doing at the ATM? Holding up the fucking line, that's what he's doing. It's hard to get angry at monks as well. You've got to be a special person to get angry at a bald, smiley monk in a robe. But honestly, how long does it fucking take to type in your pin? I have a little bit of work to do. Yeah, I do. I'm going to be honest with you. My Buddhism isn't fully up to fucking scratch at the moment. That's why I bought 14 fucking Buddhism books. And the Kama Sutra. I fucking bought a little pocket-sized book of the Kama Sutra. They actually threw it in for free. I was like, how much is this? They're like, take it. But fucking hell, that Kama Sutra, no wonder there's so many fucking people in India. It's hardcore porn. They're talking about fucking eating pussy, 69ers, inserting dick into your mouth, like obviously for the girls. Anal fucking, they've got it all in there. They've got fucking threesomes in there. They've got fucking gangbangs in there. It's fucking intense, but some of the moves, honestly, you have to be a god to be able to pull off some of these moves. There's one move in it, and, like, the girl's on top, and her (laughs) her legs are, like, up in the air, like a yoga pose, and her arms are, like, up in the air as well. It's like she's doing some yoga pose and balancing just on the dick. There's a lot of fucking limbs going at right angles. And there's a couple of moves in there where you're going to really need a fucking customized puss. Like, you're going to need a giant puss. You're going to need a puss going from basically where it starts normally to about the middle of your tits. That's <laughs> that's how hardcore the Kama Sutra is. They're like, figure this out, cunts. I reckon I've done like six moves in the whole Kama Sutra. I think there's like 50 or something. 
There's also a picture of a statue where it looks like someone is fucking a horse and there's a guy in front of the horse jerking off. <laughs> the Kama Sutra is like analog fucking porn hub. So anyway, I did a couple of gigs last night and they were fucking so much better than the night before. The rust came off pretty quick. Like I'm not all the way there, obviously, but fucking the difference between the previous night and last night, it's like two different people were doing it. So I did half an hour at eight o'clock and then I did another half an hour at 10 o'clock. Both big crowds, both good. When you're doing a little bit longer like that, you can figure it out a bit quicker because you can just sit there And fucking figure it out. Just go to the crowd, ask a couple of questions, then catch up. So after the first gig, I was very fucking concerned because I have my solo show I'm doing on the 19th of December and fucking that first one was rough. But now I'm feeling a lot more confident. Just even those two gigs back to back, the two half hour gigs, the fucking blocks were falling into place. It was nice. I've got another one tonight, another half hour gig. So that should be fucking fun too. That's my last one. Then back to Bangalore tomorrow. I missed out on paragliding because someone died last week (laughs) paragliding. So some dude last week, this is legitimately last Sunday, he went up to this place called Beer where you do the paragliding. It's B-I-R, that's how it's spelled. And he jumped off in like a tandem fucking paragliding thing. And the guy hadn't fucking secured him properly. And he free fell like, I don't know how far, but a long way directly onto the roof of a below village. So the villagers weren't happy. Obviously, the guy's family wasn't happy. So there was a big fucking blow up and they've pulled the licenses off all the paragliding operators up in beer. So you can't do it. But apparently there's some people doing it illegally. And I was pretty keen to go up there and do some illegal paragliding. But I got reminded that I have a wife and two kids now. So I don't need to be fucking paragliding, especially when some cunt died the week before. But my argument was, it's going to be safer now that someone died, isn't it? No one's going to die the week after some cunt died. This is now the safest time to go. All the equipment will be fucking checked. Everyone will be paranoid, so I'll be fucking attached to some cunt with a fucking chain. She wasn't buying it, so I fucking didn't go paragliding. And the nunnery I wanted to go to was closed as well. So the Dalai Lama was closed. Jetsumna Tenzin Palmo's nunnery was fucking closed. Paragliding, some cunt died. Like, I have to come back now. I'm coming back. I don't give a fuck. I'll come back, do some more gigs, do some paragliding, see these spiritual fucks. And then on top of that, I also need to find the DMT, honey. You don't get it here. You get it in the northeast. So in Nepal or the northeast is the only place you get it. So now I need to do a trip out there. I'm definitely going to Nepal. I'm hoping to go to Nepal in January. I suppose it all fucking depends now on this omni-cunt fucking virus variation fucking mutation. Live in the flux, people. There is no such thing as permanence. Ride those waves of impermanence and you'll be like water. That was a combination of like Buddhism, Bruce Lee and Boyle. The three Bs. (laughs) Alright, fuck that. That'll do for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, share it around with your friends and I'll see you the fuck later.